James was a new engine who lived at a station at the other end of the line. He had two small wheels in front and six driving wheels behind. They weren't as big as Gordon's and they weren't as small as Thomas's. You're a special mix traffic engine, the fat controller told him. You'll be able to pull coaches or trucks quite easily. But trucks are not easy things to manage, and on his first day, they pushed him down a hill into a field. He had been ill after the accident, but now he had new brakes and a shining coat of red paint. The red paint will cheer you up after the accident, said the fat controller kindly. You are to pull coaches today, and Edward shall help you. They went together to find the coaches. Be careful with the coaches, James, said Edward. They don't like being bumped. Trucks are silly and noisy. They need to be bumped and taught to behave. The coaches get cross and will pay you out. They took the coaches to the platform and were both coupled on in front. The fat controller, the station master, and some little boys all came to admire James's shining rods and red paint. James was pleased. I'm a really splendid engine, he thought, and suddenly let off steam. Weesh! The fat controller, the station master, and the guard all jumped, and a shower of water fell on the fat controller's nice new top hat. Just then, the whistle blew, and James thought they had better go, so they went. Go on, go on! He puffed to Edward. Don't push, don't push, puffed Edward, for he did not like starting quickly. Don't go so fast, don't go so fast, grumbled the coaches. But James did not listen. He wanted to run away before the fat controller could call him back. It, he didn't even want to stop at the station. Edward tried hard to stop, but the two coaches in front were beyond the platform before they stopped, and they had to go back to let the passengers get off. Lots of people came to look at James, and as no one seemed to know about the fat controller's top hat, James felt happier. Presently, they came to the junction where Thomas was waiting with his two coaches. Hello, James, said Thomas kindly. Feeling better? That's right. Ah, that's my guard's whistle. I must go. Sorry, I can't stop. I don't know what the fat controller would do without me to run this bright sign. And he puffed off importantly with his two coaches into a tunnel. Leaving the junction, they passed the field where James had had his accident. The fence was mended and the cows were back again. James whistled, but they paid no attention. They clattered through Edward's station yard and started to climb the hill beyond. It's ever so steep! It's ever so steep! Puffed James. I've done it before! I've done it before! Puffed Edward. It's steep! It's steep! We'll do it! But we'll do it! The two engines puffed together as they puffed as they pulled the train up the lawn hill. They both rested at the next station. Edward told James how Gordon had stuck on the hill and he had to push him up. James laughed so much that he got hiccups and surprised an old lady in a black bonnet. She dropped all her parcels and three porters, the station master and the guard, had to run after her picking them up. James was quiet in the shed that night. He had enjoyed his day, but he was a little afraid of what the fat controller would say about the top hat. Next morning, the fat controller spoke severely to James. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat and have you painted blue. James did not like that at all, and he was very rough with the coaches as he brought them to the platform. Come along! Come along! He called rudely. All in good time, all in good time, the coaches grumbled. Don't talk! Come on! Answered James, and with the coaches squealing and grumbling after him, he snorted into the station. James was cross that morning. The fat controller had spoken to him, the coaches had dawdled, and worst of all, he had to fetch his own coaches. Go and never does, and he's only blue, thought James. A splendid red angel like me should never have to fetch his own coaches. And he puffed and snorted round to the front of the train and backed onto it with a rude bump. Oh, groaned the coaches, that was too bad. To make James even more cross, he then had to take the coaches to a different platform, where no one came near him as he stood there. 
The fat controller was in his office, the station master was at the other end of the train with the guard, and even the little boy stood a long way off. James felt lonely. I am Chauvin, he said to himself. Vaping God is the only engine who can pull coaches. And as soon as the guard's whistle blew, he started off with a tremendous jerk. Come on! Come on! Come on! He puffed, and the coaches, squeaking and groaning in protest, clattered over the points onto the open line. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Puffed James. You're going too fast! You're going too fast! said the coaches. And indeed, they were going so fast that they swayed from side to side. James laughed and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop! We are going to stop! they said. And James found himself going slower and slower. What's the matter? James asked his driver. The brakes are hard on. Leaking the pipe most likely. You bang the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. The guard and the driver got down and looked at the brake pipes all along the train. At last, they found a hole where rough treatment had made a joint work loose. How shall we mend it? said the guard. James's driver thought for a moment. We'll do it with newspapers and a leather bootlace. Well, where is the bootlace coming from? asked the guard. We haven't got one. Ask the passengers, said the driver. So the guard made everyone get out. Has anyone got a leather bootlace? he asked. They all said no, except one man in a bowler hat whose name was Jeremiah Jobling, who tried to hide his feet. You have a leather bootlace there, I see, sir, said the guard. Please give it to me. I won't, said Jeremiah Jobling. Then I'm afraid this train will have to stop where it is, said the guard sternly. Then the passengers all told the guard, the driver and the fireman, what a bad railway it was. But the guard climbed into his van, and the driver and fireman made James let off steam. So, they all told Jeremiah Jobling he was a bad man instead. At last, he gave them his laces. The driver tied a pad of newspapers tightly round the hole, and James was able to pull the train. But he was a sadder and wiser James, and never took care to bump coaches again. James did not see the fat controller for several days. They left James alone in the shed and did not even allow him to go out and push coaches and trucks in the yard. Oh dear, I'll never be allowed out anymore, he thought sadly. I shall have to stay in the shed for always and no one will ever see my red coat again. Oh dear, oh dear. James began to cry. Just then the fat controller came along. I see you are sorry, James. He said. I hope now that you will be a better engine. You have given me a lot of trouble. People are laughing at my railway and I do not like that at all. I'm very sorry, sir. I will try hard to behave. Said James. That's a good engine. Said the fat controller kindly. I want you to pull some trucks for me. Run along and find them. So James puffed happily away. Here are your trucks, James, said Thomas. Have you got some boot races ready? <laughs> and he ran off laughing rudely. Oh, 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 said the trucks as James backed down on them. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started as soon as the guard was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't screamed the trucks, but James didn't care, and he pulled the screeching truck sternly out of the yard. The trucks tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot. Each time they would have to stop and put the trouble right, and each time James would start again, determined not to let the trucks beat him. Give up! Give up! You can't pull us! You can't! You can't! called the trucks. I count and I will! I count and I will! puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line. At last, they saw Gordon Till ahead. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster, and they were soon halfway up the hill. I'm doing it! I'm doing it! 
he panted. But it was hard work. Will the top never come? He thought, when with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it! I've done it! He puffed triumphantly. Hooray! It's easy now! But his driver shut off steam. They've done it again. We've left our tail behind. He said. The last ten trucks were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped. But the guard was brave. Very carefully and cleverly, he made them stop. Then he got out and walked down the hill with his red flag. James wondered why it was easy as he backed the other trucks carefully down. What silly figs trucks are! There might have been an accident! Meanwhile, the guard had stopped Edward, who was pulling three coaches. Shall I help you, James? called Edward. No, thank you. I'll pull them myself, answered James. Good. Don't let them beat you. So James got ready. Then with a peep peep, he was off. I can do it. I can do it. He puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. Peep 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 peep. You're doing well whistled Edward as James slowly struggled up the hill with clouds of smoke and steam pouring from his funnel. I've done it! I've done it! He panted and disappeared over the top. They reached their station safely. James was resting in the yard when Edward puffed by with a cheerful peep peep. Then walking towards him across the rails, James saw the fat controller. Oh dear, what will he say? He asked himself sadly, but the fat controller was smiling. I was in Edward's train and saw everything, he said. You made the most troublesome trucks on the line behave. After that, you deserve to keep your red coat. Sometimes Gordon and Henry slept in James's shed, and they would talk of nothing but bootlaces. James would talk about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills, but they wouldn't listen and went on talking and laughing. You talk too much, little James, Gordon would say. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct," said Gordon proudly. Every wise engine knows, of course, that the signal man works the points to make engines run on the right lines, but Gordon was so proud that he had forgotten. Wake up, James. It's nearly time for the express, he said next morning. What are you doing? Odd jobs? Oh, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches. Don't be late now. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were now all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily, We're going away! We're going away! I wish I was going with you, said James. I should love to pull the express and go flying along the line. He left them in the station and went back to the yard, just as Gordon, with much noise and blowing up steam, backed onto the train. The fat controller was on the train, with other important people, and as soon as they heard the guard's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now! Look at me now! He puffed, and the coaches glided after him out of the station. Boop, boop, boop. Goodbye, little James. See you tomorrow. James watched the train disappear around a curve, and then went back to work. He pushed some trucks into their proper sidings and went to fetch the coaches for another train. He brought the coaches to the platform and was just uncoupled when he heard a mournful quiet shush, 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 and there was Gordon trying to sidle into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is that tomorrow? asked James. Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? No, it was lost for me. He answered crossly. I was switched off the main line and onto the loop. 
I had to go all round and back again. Ha 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 Perhaps it was instinct, said James brightly. Meanwhile, all the passengers hurried to the booking office. We want our money back, they shouted. Everyone was making a noise, but the fat controller climbed on a trolley and blew the guard's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new engine at once. Gordon can't do it, he said. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir, I'll try. So James was coupled on, and everyone got in again. Do your best, James, said the fat controller kindly. Just then the whistle blew, and he had to run to get in. Come along, come along, puffed James. You're pulling us well, you're pulling us well, sang the coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. Stations and bridges flashed by. The passengers leaned out of the windows and cheered, and they soon reached the terminus. Everyone said thank you to James. Well done, James, said the fat controller. Will you like to pull the express sometimes? Oh, yes, please, answered James happily. Next day when James came by, Gordon was pushing trucks in the yard. I like some quiet work for a change, he said. I'm teaching these trucks some manners. You did well with those coaches, I hear. Good, we'll show them. And he gave his trucks a bump, making them cry, Oh, oh, oh! James and Gordon are now good friends. James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about bootlaces, and they are both quite agreed on the subject of